Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and two months after Godot 3.4 was released, we now have the first beta stream of Godot 3.5. Now, keyword there is beta. That means you do not want to be using this one in production. Obviously, this is under development. It's for you to give them feedback, see if it works with your project, that kind of stuff, not for production use. And we're going to start things off with a demonstration. There's actually not a ton in the beta as of yet, but lately Godot has been adding more and more features with each beta release. So what you're seeing at the beginning of 3.5 and what you see at the end probably won't be identical, but what we're seeing is a continuing trend of Godot 4 features being backported to Godot 3. Uh, point five in this case, so we're going to see one of the demonstrations and actions, and this is the new navigation system. This is, again, from Godot 4, was backported to Godot 3, works in both 3D and in 2D, and let's show you what happens here. So I'm going to go ahead and run this example. Bum, bum, bum. And you'll see here, we have this guy running through the world. It's avoiding obstacles. It's handling dynamic updates in the world. When it gets to its checkpoint, the world is being changed. It is getting a new pathfinding system. And off it goes to the next destination. This is the navigation system in Godot. Uh, this is brand new and now available in Godot 3.5. It's based on the RVO algorithms. We'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, but that is the end of the demonstration portion of this video. You can see how it works here. Um, the world is composed of a navigation mesh. You've also got things inside here, such as this mesh instance. It is a collision shape. You have various different collisions in the world. Um, you've got uh, obstacles that need to be avoided that you can define here. And then the key thing here is in your player script. Let's go ahead and open that guy up right here. And what you will see is you're using scripts such as navigation agent to say, okay, I want to go here. The navigation server calculates the best path. It updates each time. Uh, and it just basically is a way of simply doing pathfinding through your game world. So the navigation server is now available, Godot 3.5. And that's kind of it for the demonstrable stuff because the other two things don't really have a visual component to them, even though one of them is all about shaders. So let's get into that right now. So I'm going to come back to the release notes. Instead, we're going to look at the three specific main Major new features. So again, you've got navigation server and navigation server 2D built in. Uh, that same demonstration project I showed you also has a 2D example. So what you saw in 3D can also be done in 2D. Um, with nav uh, mesh baking, you can uh, weld new regions in. Navigation agent is used for tra uh, traveling around the world. You can set up obstacles. Works in 2D and 3D. It is multi-thread safe. Um, and again, there is a 2D version. If you want to go ahead and check out the project I just showed you, it is available for download right here. I will link this uh, particular document in the article down below. I will actually link all three examples of the major new features in 3.5 in the article down below. The next one we have is async compilation and caching. Basically, what happens with there was a bit of a hiccup when um, shaders were first passed in. Uh, this is an approach to fix that by using something called an Uber shading to, pre to prevent uh, stalling in game. Um, so as long as the target platform supports the program binary GL extensions, this is just enable and forget. Uh, so you don't really have to do anything. Uh, so asynchronous compilation of shaders. Um, it will work if enabled and supported by the GL driver. If native parallel compilation is supported, that's used, which is the most efficient. Otherwise, asynchronicity is achieved with a, via secondary GL context that sends the compiler shader back to the main one in binary form, which means the program binary extension must be supported if both fail async compilation is effectively disabled. So what this is going to do is cause you to not have... Um, the shader hookups when you first do it and it's doing it by providing a giant shader the uber shader that will um, launch things on go um so this is replacing this. Okay, so that uh, is there. We've got the Uber shader approach. Uh, async compilation of shaders should make for less shader hitches. Definitely nice in that regard. And then the final one is Git plugin integration. So if you want to do version control directly inside of the Godot game engine, uh, you're getting better functionality there. It is implemented as a plugin. Coincidentally, it didn't work for me when I set it up, but uh, hopefully it works better for you. Again, beta. Expect beta stuff. So you can see here in the project, you go to version control, you set up your version control, you just give it all the information you need. So uh, you can view differences uh, for files and commits in Git directly inside of Godot. Um, stage and unstage files right there. Commit changes to Git. Uh, branches, uh, use multiple remotes and push, pull, fetch new changes. Um, so if you are working with Git, um, 
on your back end for version control, this plugin should make your life a better place. So that is it for the major new features. By the way, uh, the navigation mesh stuff we saw earlier on is based on the RV02 algorithm, which is an, also an open source project. It's under the Apache 2 license. This is what was implemented. Uh, it stands for Optimal Reciprocal Collision Avoidance. So if you want to read more about the RV02 library, um, it's an open source C++ 98 implementation of the algorithms. This is what was implemented uh, to have the new nav uh, server functionality that we saw in the demonstration earlier. And then finally, back to the release notes. We're not going to go into a ton of detail here because we've covered the main points here. So again, you got the asynchronous shader compilation and caching. Um, so the new system uses an Uber shader, a big shader supporting all features, slow but is compiled on startup, to fill in for all shaders initially while the more efficient and material specific shaders get compiled asynchronously and cast for future runs. This means that on the first run, materials may look a little bit different for a second or two, but there should be no longer be compilation lag. Again, test test the heck out of that particular one. Uh, and no work is required for this, I believe. You basically, it's just turn on and good to go. Uh, we, again, we have the, the navigation server with obstacle avoidance uh, using that RBO2 algorithm. This is coming from Godot 4 all the way back from 2020. So yeah, we've been waiting for Godot 4 for quite a while. And then the visual, uh, the version control stuff uh, that we mentioned there. There's a couple of other um, minor implementations in this. Uh, Gradient Texture 2D has been added in. Um, Deep comparison of uh, arrays and dictionaries, uh, and a few other things here as well, but nothing really massive at that point in time. Um, so if you want to go ahead and download it, all the downloads are available right here. Just come on in, pick the build style you want, pick the uh, the executable version you want, like so. I do not know why this looks so funky, uh, but yeah. So you'll see here it is available for Linux. Uh, both as server headless versions. Uh, we got OS X. Uh, there is a web version of it, by the way, if you want to go ahead and check that out, that is linked from this article as well. I believe it's right near the top. Um, so there is the online version you can check out right here. Uh, you do need to have a project that to upload, however. Uh, so if you don't have a zip project to upload to the server, obviously you aren't going to want to go this route. So anyways, that is Godot 3.5 first beta. Again, there be dragons. Don't use this in production. Uh, three major new features there. The version control, uh, the Uber shader for shader compilation and asynchronous compilation of shaders. And of course, the new navigation server, which was backported from Godot 4. What do you think of this release? And that is it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.